knowledge of bread making only comes from a passion for eating it, unfortunately, <laughs> and for making it as uh, I love making bread, I love eating bread, and little by little, I've just learnt more and more. And Philip and others, whenever we have um, out of living uh, stuff, do I always come up with oh, a few loaves? Yeah. And I know that you know that if you don't like what I have done. And if at the end of today you think, you know what, Babette, I knew it all, you haven't told me more than Paul said, or whatever, it wasn't my style, it was difficult, then you are absolutely welcome to say so, we will give you your money back, the only thing I won't do is give you the freebies. But most recipes tend to put a 2% salt, I always use about 1% only, and I'm beginning to experiment with... Point eight, and it's still quite okay. Again, that it could be a question of personal taste. But flour, liquid, it doesn't have to be water. It can be milk, it can be beer. I've made bread with cider, and you can make bread with wine. So the principle, liquid flour, and raising agent. So raising agent normally is yeast. Sometimes we'll have different results. But I have been using Shipton Mill flowers myself for about five or six years. They are English, an English company up in Gloucester. It's a mill which has been, the, the, the current owners have been there for about 30 years, but the spot is mentioned in the Doomsday Book. <laughs> the first mention of a mill there in Tedbury is 1339. So I would like each of you to get feel and to smell it. And it is a bit pongy, but it's really important. It's a nice, I, I love it now. And this is just water and flour. So dear Mr. Paul of Hollywood, I disagree with him on his way to do sourdough. I had another customer, I did a, a little run of uh, bread in Reigate about two or three weeks ago, and they have, by its nature, is slow, because the yeast which I in here they're kind of, you know, we pick them up from our kitchen, there's those wild yeast. And compared to industrial yeast, the difference is uh, potency. This, what people have found in the baking industry, they found ways to concentrate the yeast, and also there are different strains or different types. They, they all have different names, you know, that's in, in some books, um, which, you know, is easier to develop a lot of. So a very little bit of this will do the same job as the patient of all of us is to make doughs which are dry. Dry, they're also called, they are, there's lots of jargon in the bread world, lots of names that will mean the same thing, uh, but uh, dry, less water compared to... Um, The 100 gram is what you do if you just want to feed it and not do a lot. As I know I've got another lesson on Monday, I'm going to put far more than this. I'm just going to put some. It doesn't have to be just the 100 gram. The 100 gram is a bit like a minimum if you just want to. And then, again, I certainly never measure anything there anymore. Because it doesn't talk about why this container. You have seen that most people have the jars. What do we call them? Kilner jars. And somebody like dear Paul Hollywood or even Dan Leppard show not only this in a Kilner jar, but the Kilner jar locked. A Kilner jar? Locked. 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 Do you want to show me one? Give me one. Now, if you have a very big Kilner jar, and if you have just a little bit of dough, that is okay. However, what's the risk? Well, that's a tiny one, but even if it was a bigger one. So if you have just a tiny, you know, proportion and a lot of air, okay. The problem, and sorry, so those jars, when they're used, nearly always you see them like that. It could be really, really dangerous. If you've got an active jobby and you lock it, yes? What did you say, Serena? It will explode. It could explode.